We are being joined by our semi-finalist, Wesley. Welcome and a big congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Hi, Tanya. Hi, Peter. I just want to say I truly enjoyed both of you guys' commentaries and I tend to go over the little details right after the game. Yeah, welcome, Wesley. Very nice to have you here. Congratulations. I mean, it was uh, suddenly today was very smooth. What, what can you tell about this uh, match? Yeah, thank you, Peter. Well, I think um, Duda is an amazing player. He's very strong and he's got a lot of potential and uh, is uh, by far the, number, the best player in Poland. But I think when you lose the first day, it's, it's uh, psychologically quite tough to, to bounce back on the second day because you're in the back foot of things. So I've experienced that myself in these tournaments when having lost the first day, it's very difficult to, to put a stiff resistance in, in, the, in the second day. You have to be very patient. And I think uh, today just didn't suit Jan Kristoff's style because he always plays for a win with both colors and it backfired today. Especially in the second game, because I don't think he plays the Kings Indian, for example. So he had to go for these risky openings uh, with with both colors. Also, Actually, I think one. Yes, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Go on, Wesley. Yeah. So also, I think uh, uh, another factor is that I was doing well in the openings with with both colors. So that contributed greatly to the fact, uh, because compared to my match, for example, against Taymor or against Maxim, they were putting extremely difficult positions when I had the black pieces. But with Jan Kristoff, I was getting just equal positions with black, and that clearly helped. Talking about this decision of the Kings Indian, it was actually something that Peter was very critical about, especially the line that he chose. And you mentioned it yourself. It's not something that uh, Duda plays often himself. Uh, Wesley, when you saw it on the board, what was your feeling? Yeah, when I saw he played Knight BD7, I figured he wanted to go all out for the win, obviously, uh, because if he plays E5, I could take. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> I played it before. But when he played Knight BD7, I don't know, it's a hard thing to say because the Kings Indian is a very difficult opening to play. And you need a lot of experience with the black pieces to play this opening very well because it's very risky. And after I, I place my pawn on D5, I have a space advantage. And I think F6 is just uh, uh, a mistake, but maybe this line is quite difficult for black already. I think I have to play Knight B6 followed by F5. But if I remember correctly, uh, this was some Kramnik game. Probably Peter, you know this, you know this position. I think Kramnik has played this with white, so this was where my preparation was based upon. Yeah, so Tyrus knows this line. Oh yeah, Kramnik, Kramnik Kanaak, 1992, according to Satyrus. <laughs> yeah, so you really knew that game? I mean, that game from Kramnik? Yeah, I have this. I have this uh, book. Well, not his book, but Kalifman's book, "Opening a Perter for White," according to Kramnik. So I have all those books. Yeah, this Tyrus knows it too. Well, I mean, having those books, but also knowing what's in them is is a two different <laughs> story. I think the whole world knows about that. It's it's quite impressive and stunning that despite you know this is not like a really challenging line that you are so up to date and you know everything about it. Yeah, I think uh, because the Kings Indians very strategic openings, so once you know the ideas, they kind of are very similar. But uh, yeah, so I think maybe it's a bad decision for Jan Kristoff to play this line because, uh, I mean, he could make a draw and go all out for the win with the white pieces, and that might be the more prudent choice. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, Kings Indians is a hard opening to play. Wesley, what would you do in, in, uh, in your opponent's shoes? Which opening would you choose if you were in his situation and you needed a win? Can you recommend to all of us? Because I think people are frustrated how to play for a win. If you need a win with black pieces, it's really hard. Any, any advice? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's true. I mean, um, in a match situation, I'd probably go for a draw with black and try to win all out with the white. But if you really have to win with the black pieces, then uh, yeah, it's very difficult. First, you have to get a game, but probably the Kings Indians not 
the best choice because it gives a lot of space. Maybe he could play like what Anish played yesterday. He went for the Bogo Indian. Mm-hmm. You go for the Bogo. I think Anish had a very good explanation yesterday of how to play for a win with the Black Thieves. I mean, no one expected him to win with Black Thieves, but he managed to do so very convincingly. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, again, I guess if you have to play for win with black, if your opponent plays e4, then obviously you go for the Sicilian. But meanwhile, against d4, it's a bit more difficult. But maybe like the Bogo Indian or, or I don't know, Slav. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. I know it's a tough question. Thank you for, for giving a little insight into yeah. what would you do. Thank I, you so much. I love that question. Oh, Wesley, now you are our first semi-finalist, but I have to say when the quarterfinals started, now that first game that we saw, it was just brilliantly played by both you and, and Duda as well. Uh, firstly, thank you for giving us that very entertaining combative game, but it didn't end well. Bishop F2 was a big miss and uh, uh, you started the quarterfinals with a loss. You've been unstoppable since, but tell us what were your uh, thoughts after that first game? Yeah, I mean, I go, go, going through this uh, uh, through these matches, I absolutely have no pressure because I know no matter what happens, win loss, I'll be in the next one also because I'm still in the top eight. So I think uh, compared to other players like Shankland or, or Dominguez, uh, they're not or Jan Christoph, they're not assured of a spot in the next tournament. So for me, I think it takes a lot of pressure. So I didn't mind all if I, if I would lose or stuff. But of course, I want to put up a good fight and give my best. Uh, but yeah, Jan, after winning the second game yesterday, Jan had a large initiative and uh, he had a big advantage uh, in that stage of the match. But I think his style is not suited for uh, playing four draws. Uh, he's a very aggressive player, he plays for the win in in every game and uh, he's very young so it's it's a very good thing to do when you're young to, to try to go all out and gain and learn some experience so he's got a very bright future ahead of him but i think his style is not suited for uh solidity i, I don't think his uh, style is suited for a 12 draws so that yeah, was yeah, I'm thinking so, about Peter Leko versus Vladimir Kramnik. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good luck coming back against Vlad. Uh, Wesley, now, so far in this event, we've been talking about just how impressive your play has been, even in the preliminaries. Just very pragmatic and very solid, taking your chances when you got them. I'm sure you're very pleased with the way things have gone so far, but also with the quality of your play. Uh, reasons to be happy with that. Yeah, I think, yeah, the, there have been some days where I played very badly. Like, I think on the first day, made tons of blunders. And I was lucky to end up plus two. And the second day, my quality of play has been much better in the third day. Uh, yesterday has not been very good, but today has been extremely good. So it's been up and down so far. But um, um, I mean, this is the third time I'm playing this this event. Uh, in the last few months. So I'm getting used to the schedule. And as I said yesterday, 10 a.m. in the morning seems to work very well for me because I just barely woke up and I'm ready to play. And there's no ne nervous tension of having to, to an of anticipating when the game starts because you play right away. So I think the schedule works well for me. But uh, yeah, again, I'm very happy to, to be in this tournament and, and pleased and hope to play some good games. And um, it's going to be exciting to watch uh, Taymor, Rajabob, and Anish Giri's match now that I have a break. I was going to ask you now, we started uh, the tournament with four Americans. You're, uh, you're the last one remaining. Uh, and uh, this match starts in the morning for you. Tomorrow you go into the semifinals. Uh, what is that like? Do you, do you take a little bit of break? Do you calm down? Or are you already thinking about the semis? Yeah, I'll just think, good answer, good question. I just, uh, I think most important part is uh, to uh, be in a good state of mind, to be to have a, a good long long sleep. Generally, I take ten hours of sleep every night. Uh, that's very important because uh, openings are just one part. So you also need to to play well. I notice also in this tournament, once 
the players get very low on time. Blunders just come and it doesn't really matter who's better or who's who's winning. So once the players gets down to a few seconds, blunders will come inevitably. And that generally is the deciding factor in the match. So I think that's the uh, most important uh, part. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm very curious to see who will, who will win this Anish Gear against Taymor Rajabov match. Uh, before the tournament, I thought Taymor would win, but Anish has been playing extremely well too, so maybe he would he would win. So it's hard to say. Hopefully, they'll go in the blitz. That's quite interesting that you mentioned that before the event, you would have uh, maybe picked uh, Taymor because Anish was just coming back from a fabulous uh, run at the Waikanze. So uh, why? Yeah. Well, because Taymor won the last uh, major tournament last month. And uh, he's been playing extremely well, extremely solid. Um, if you check this tournament, he's barely made any mistakes. Mm. So um, coming for the event, I thought he's one of the favorites. And also after the prelimi preliminaries, I thought he's, uh, not to put down Anish, but I thought Taymor is the slight favorite, just because he's been doing really well in this online events. But uh, re it's really hard to say, it's very close. and. Um, the way Anish won with the black pieces yesterday in the last game was very impressive and that was very important as well. So, uh, um, probably their chances are 50-50 right now. Probably will go for the blitz. So you, you, you would predict a playoff in that match? Uh, yeah, if I have to predict, I would say two draws and go to, to the blitz. All right, well, we'll see how that happens now. Uh, Wesley, a lot of us always wonder because this format is so demanding uh, that what is yeah. it that players do between the two games? Uh, tell us, and I know different things work for different players, but because you've been so impressive so far, what is it that you have been doing in the short time that you get between the games? Uh, I eat a few hot dogs. <laughs> no, I just remember Ian saying that this tournament is like a hot dog competition because we play like uh, like um, 23 games in a span of five days. So that's how many I played in the last few days. But uh, no, uh, joking aside, I the most important thing I think this tournament is to try to move on quickly and forget about the last game. So have a very short memory memory span. Because uh, you only have uh, at, you only have at most 15, 20 minutes, and sometimes 10 minutes before every game. So I think for everybody, for every player here, the most important thing is to try to forget about the last game very quickly. It doesn't matter if you win or you lose or you draw. Uh, the most important thing is to try to forget about the game and try to take each game as if it's the very first round. And I think that's helped me a lot. I, Try to clear my mind in between uh, each game. Try to forget about the chess and uh, try to take each game uh, as single round. Right, and uh, we've also been seeing that you get a little help from your cat as well. Now, the two most famous pets currently are Ponchik and your cat. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Ponchik. Yeah, and fortunately, I don't have Twitter. I only have Facebook, so it's not like we can post uh, right away, but my cat's always here uh, for for moral support. He, he is she around right now? Night. Sorry. Is she around right now? Yeah. <laughs> I'll give one second. Yeah, we get. Sure. So the secret weapons, yeah, that's that's that what... is it, Peter. That is that is what is missing from our lives. <laughs> yeah, and West is revealing his secret. Yeah, I mean that's that's very nice for us. It's not preparation, it's not anything, it is just having the support system. <laughs> having a cat. <laughs> 10 What's hours that? of sleep and a cat. That's the secret, yes. <laughs> uh -huh. Have a cat meditation, very relaxing. <laughs> What's his name? Uh, his name is Fancy Bar. He's uh, 18 and a half. Uh, but I hope he still lives for, for a long time. Well, I'm sure if you keep playing the way you're playing, uh, Sanzibar will be there to support you. Wesley, thank you so much for joining thank us you. and providing us this amazing uh, display of chess that you do. Uh, we can't wait to see you in the semifinals. Well, thank you, Peter, Tanya, and thank you, Mikhail. Uh, it's been a real, a real pleasure uh, watching your shows. And uh, yeah, to have a former candidate 
uh, commenting on on the games is uh, is a big honor. Really. Well, thanks a lot, Wesley, and go really good luck in the tournament. It's always a delight to see you play. Thank you, Peter. Good luck.